And I rise to speak in reply to the tabling of the first Parliamentary Leadership Task Force Annual Report and the commitment across the Chamber to implement codes of conduct for parliamentarians and for staff. One year ago, we stood in this place and acknowledged all those who had been harmed, abused, raped, harassed, bullied, discriminated against or otherwise made to feel unsafe in this place. We recognised the hurt that had occurred, the toxic culture that had allowed it, and the bravery of those who had spoken out and forced a change. I said at the time that the acknowledgement was important, but words were not enough. I'm very pleased to be able to stand here one year on and report on the progress that has been made, and to restate the Greens' commitment to implement the Set the Standards recommendations in their entirety. There is still a long way to go, but the momentum is with this change, and I am hopeful that parliamentary workplaces can be safe, diverse, inclusive and respectful, the model workplaces that the Australian people expect. The Set the Standard report made it clear that two major hurdles to effectively changing the culture in this place were the lack of a robust, enforceable code of conduct and the lack of an independent complaints mechanism that people could trust would take genuine action against bullies and harassers. We know that for First Nations people, people of colour, people with disability, the harassment and the disrespect experienced in this place, or even online when working in parliamentary roles, is even worse. Sexism, racism, ableism, homophobia and classism persist and are even more damaging and dangerous when they intersect. Increasing diversity in this place is crucial. But that cannot happen without measures to make this a safe workplace for a more diverse range of people. I'm very pleased that we now have cross-party support for the codes of conduct that I hope uh, and desperately need to improve behavioural standards in this place. And I thank the Joint Committee on Parliamentary Standards, in particular my colleague Senator Faruqi, for their work in developing these codes, and for Senator Faruqi's tireless and successful efforts to strengthen the code, particularly as the only person of colour in the room on that Joint Committee. Senator Faruqi will speak more about the role that those codes will play. We welcome the amendments to the MOPS Act to strengthen staff protections and the independent parliamentary workplace support service that has been providing sensitive, high-quality support to staff and to which the government has committed to continuing. Within our own party, the Greens have taken clear steps to confirm our commitment. We have strengthened our internal codes of conduct and complaints mechanisms. We've ensured that MPs and staff undertake regular training to promote First Nations cultural awareness, anti-racism and accessibility. We remain committed to achieving diversity and gender equality. And this commitment informs our decisions regarding pre-selection of candidates, election to leadership positions and recruitment. I'm proud that we have a party room and a party with strong representation from women and non-binary folk, First Nations and people of colour, LGBTIQ plus uh, community, uh, regional areas, young people and people with disability. Our party is stronger as a result of this diversity, but even we need to do better. Ultimately, the test of our success is not whether I feel confident or safe or respected in this workplace, it's whether our staff feel safe and whether parliament is a place that people want to work. It's critical that staff continue to be involved in the reforms to implement the set the standard recommendations and feel supported to tell us when we're not doing enough. Staff consultation mechanisms are an outstanding issue that all parties need to come to the table on and that the Greens are committed to progressing. I want to finish by again thanking Commissioner Jenkins for the incredible work that she and her small team did to set out the roadmap for us to follow. She'll be wrapping up her role as Sex Discrimination Commissioner in just a few months, and she deserves to feel deep pride and the gratitude of all of us and all of the folk that work in this place for her role in catalysing the changes that we're seeing. Let's continue to clean up what has been a really toxic and damaging workplace, and let's aspire to actually set the standard for the rest of the nation. Authorised by Elle Waters, Australian Greens, Canberra.